أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين بالقاسم محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Tuesday night program of Dua Tawassul Inshallah, we'll start with the dua, followed by a brief um, discussion. Inshallah, we'll conclude with uh, uh, with the ziyarat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أسألك وتوجه إليك بنبيك نبي الرحمة محمد صلى الله عليه وآله يا أبا القاسم يا رسول الله يا إمام الرحمة يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا أمير المؤمنين يا علي بن أبي طالب يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا فاطمة الزهراء يا بنت محمد يا قرة عين الرسول يا سيدتنا ومولاتنا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهتان عند الله اشفعي لنا عند الله يا با محمد يا حسن ابن علي أيها المشتبى يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا عبد الله يا حسين بن علي أيها الشهيد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا علي بن الحسين يا زين العابدين يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله 
رسول يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان إن الله وجہ وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا موسى بن جعفر أيها الكاظم يا بن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا ابا الحسن يا علي ابن موسى ايها الرضا يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا جعفر يا محمد بن علي أيها التقي الجواد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا ابا الحسن يا علي ابن محمد ايها الهاد النقي يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا محمد يا حسن بن علي أيها الزكي العسكري يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه 
يا سيدنا ومولانا انا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك الى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وسيم الحسن والخلف الحجة أيها القائم المنتظر المهدي يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله اشفع لنا حاجات من الله سبحانه وتعالى يا سادتي وموالي اني توجهت بكم ائمتي وعدتي ليوم فقري وحاجتي الى الله وتوسلت بكم الى الله واستشفعت بكم الى الله فاشفعوا لي ان الله واستنقذوني من ذنوبي ان الله فانكم وسيلتي الى الله وبحبكم وبقربكم ارجو نجاة من الله فكونوا ان الله رجائي يا سادتي يا اولياء الله صلى الله عليهم اجمعين ولان الله عدا الله ظالميهم من الاولين والاخرين امين رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم لارواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات فاتحه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينُ اهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم Let's remember all of those people who are in need of dua um those who have asked for us to remember them in their duas and those who are struggling and suffering um physically financially health wise spiritually may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring them out of all of their difficulties and give them a quick recovery let's recite this verse from surah namal together five times bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim amma yujibu al-mustar idha da'ahu wa yakshifu as-su' أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 ويجعلكم خلفاء الأرض ailahum ma'allah qalilan ma tadhakkarun rahamallahu man qara surat al-fatiha bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillah rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين 
خاتم النبيين عبد القاسم محمد واهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى وقوله الحق وهو اصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين صدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته inshallah in the next uh, 15 minutes under this uh, ayat of surah al imran ayat number 134 i will present a few arise recited this ayah uh, there was a program which was done under the topic of uh, anger management uh, in which i participated and i thought the a um, conversation which i had with other panelists over there was uh, interesting to share with my community as well the commonly recited ayah in this reference is from surah al imran ayat number 134 the word ghayz uh, has appeared in this ayah which refers to the concept of uh, anger has appeared in quran on three different occasions but more fitting in this ayat um as to what we want to discuss that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying that those who spent um fi sarra'i wa dhara um in ease and in adversity wal kaadhimin al ghayz and those who suppress their anger wal aafina an nas and those who forgive the people wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin in these allah loves those who are righteous those who are muhsinin So if a person controls his nerves and temper he does not get irritated and angry this has been referred to in this ayat or as well as in the traditions as kadhumul ghayz which literally means to swallow one's anger god the exalted considers controlling nerves or swallowing one's anger and forgiveness to one of the most important traits of pious and virtuous people of course this is something which is understood and there's so many riwayat that have appeared in this uh, bab in this uh, section and i'll share a few um where holy prophet hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam said al ghadhab yufsid al iman kama yufsid al khall or khill al asala It is reported um that prophet says that anger uh, spoils faith in the same way vinegar destroys honey i've never personally uh, experienced this but i take this word that if you were to add vinegar to honey um that honey probably will not be usable then and it destroys the honey it says ghadab does the same thing to a person's faith and a person's iman that it destroys it it leads to the word fasad which is being used by the holy prophet and also the word kavum which has been mentioned in this um you know previous ayat that i recited has numerous meanings however its original meaning is to tightly seal the top of a flask so imagine if you have you know a flask which is full of water or something that you want to keep in it warm or cold when you tightly um you know seal the top of the flask it is also used in the meaning of swallowing one's anger since a person who becomes upset it is said that anger spills out of him but if you keep it tightly closed this kazm means to uh, control it from spilling out similarly how this uh, cap on top of this flask it it keeps the water or anything that is the contents from spilling outside um same word kavum is used when a person um applies it it keeps their anger from spilling out and therefore another tradition from our 60 mom 
Imam Jafar al-Sadiq al-Islam, he said, Al-Ghadabu miftahu kulli sharrin. That anger is the key to all kinds of sharr and evil. In fact, if we look at it from the, you know, if I can paraphrase the word or elaborate on the words of Imam because it requires elaboration, anger is the key that opens the door to all kinds of evils. So al ghadabu miftahu kulli sharrin. That all of the shurur and all of the evils could be opened with the key of anger. So the important thing is we all know about the dangers of it. We all know about um, the side effects of it. We all are experts in it because once in a while, all of us do uh, experience it and we get angry. How do you eradicate the roots of anger? That's where the skill lies. That's what um, you know would be something if we are able to uh, learn or capitalize or to even train ourselves of course it's not something which can be just learned in a lecture and then um, we move forward with it it's a gradual process of training ourselves among the fundamental remedies of anger one is to exterminate the factors responsible for its provocation again easy said than done that means what that means to get rid of exterminate all of those elements and all of those factors which become the res responsibility, which become, which are the factors which are responsible for mm, provoking this anger. Now, a lot of time it will be difficult to eradicate or to exterminate them. You just have to live with those factors sometimes. There are many. And here we can mention a few just so that we can um, see if these factors are part of us. Uh, one of them is the self-love that we have which in turn begets the love of wealth, glory, and honor, and the desire to impose one's will and expand one's domain of power. Um, and of course, many of us may not have that type of power which is being addressed over here, but in our own capacities, we do have some sort of power. Whether we are head of a state, we are head of an institution, we're head of a household, whatever the case may be, or a store or, you know, workforce or whatever the case may be, there's this uh, domain of power that we have. And in order to impose that, in order to keep the honor and integrity and the desire to impose that, have this glory for yourself. Um, and then this in turn is because of the self-love that we have. So try these strategies to refrain from you know, to reframe rather your thinking um, when these sort of ideas creep in. Avoid words like never or always. Yes. When talking about yourself to others or when you're talking about others to them, don't try to use these words never and always. Statements like this never works or you're always forgetting things. Um, you know, this, this makes you feel your anger is justified. A lot of time when you use these words, never or always, um, after an argument or something like that, when you have gotten angry, it makes you feel that you were justified in what you were doing. So such statements also alienate people who might otherwise be willing to work with you on a solution. So here's a person who's trying to solve things, but because of your um, pettiness and usage of the words always or never, you're not willing to uh, pay heed. Use logic. Of course, it's difficult to use logic at the moment you're angry, but use logic afterwards, for example. Even when it's justified, anger can quickly become irrational. So, of course, raged, enraged people, angry people, they are far, far away from any type of aql or logic, they become irrational. Remind yourself that world is not out to get you. Even if things seem like they're all going against you, uh, everyone's trying to plot against you. No, they're not out to get to you. They have other things to do. Do this each time you start feeling angry and you'll get more balanced perspective. Um, translate expectations into desires. 
angry people tend to demand things, whether it's fairness, appreciation, agreement, or willingness to do things their way. Try to change your demands into more requests by reframing how you say something. This will work good if you're in a small business, a small company, when they're subordinate under you, or even in a household. You know, the way you um, re re phrase things, uh, instead of sounding like demands, it should be sort of like a request where the other side would be willing to do things if it is in that sort of form. But when your ego gets in the way, that no, no, why should I be requesting when something is my right? Then these uh, anger-filled emotions creep in. And if things don't go your way, try not to let your disappointment turn into anger. Um, relax. Simple, simple as that. You know, simple relaxation strategies such as deep breathing and relaxing imagery. I see now that, you know, we're going through this pandemic and uh, um, many of the kids are doing school from home. Um, very interesting things that I'm learning when, when we accompany our kids, when we're sitting with them um, for their online schooling. Um, very the first thing in the morning where their homeroom teacher um, you know, teaches them something or there's an announcement that is done. First thing that they do after the Pledge of Allegiance and all that stuff is, or pr prior to that, is relaxing the kids. Some relaxation techniques where they'll show you a you know, very soothing, eye-soothing picture and they'll tell you to, for example, look at it or, for example, if there aren't any pictures, they'll tell you to close your eyes Imagine that you're at a place like this, so and so, breathe in, breathe out, um, you know, different activities um, so that you relax your, your nerves, you relax your body, and just by simple techniques, by deep breathing, uh, relaxing imagery can help soothe angry feeling. If you practice one or more of these strategies often, it will be easier to apply them when anger or angry feelings you know, strike you because they could strike at any time. Focused breathing, swallow, um, you know, as you're swallowing your anger. And a lot of time, especially um, when you're breathing, shallow breathing is angry breathing, you know, short breathing. Rather, practice taking controlled, slow breaths that you picture coming from your belly rather than your chest. Um, use imagery, visualize a relaxing experience from your memory or from your imagination. The time when you were, for example, at Ziyarat, you were standing in the Haram of Imam Hussein, for example. You went to Hajj, you were standing, for example, in front of Kaaba. You know, that night when you were sitting in the Haram or in the Sahan of Kaaba, when people were going around the Kaaba, circumambulating, it was almost morning time, you know, just before Salatul Layl. And, um, and you're sitting and there's nothing but Kaaba in front of you. Or, you know, if you were in the Haram of um, Rasulullah or the Haram of Masumin, imagine these things as you're trying to relax yourselves. Now we have a lot of time on our hands. So I think this should become actually part of our routine. Progressive muscle relaxation with this technique, uh, you slowly tense, um, you know, the then relax your muscle group one at a time. Um, for example, you might start with your toes, slowly work your way up to your head and to your neck. And again, the people who are professionals in this, they can probably provide better help. And again, there are a lot of DIYs these days and any of these things could be uh, searched up on YouTube or um, you, know, um, you could find the videos of it to go ahead and work on it. Uh, improve your uh, communication skill. Uh, people often jump to conclusions when they're angry and they can say the first often unkind thing that pops into their heads. Try to stop and listen before reacting. Um, then take time to think carefully about how you want to reply that. Because if you just based on what the question or the comment came and you reply right away, you probably give a actually worse re reply. If you need to step away to cool down before continuing the conversation, make promise 
to come back later to finish the discussion, for example, in order to solve that has that has to be resolved, for example. Um, get active. Regular physical exercise can help you decompress, burn off extra tensions, um, and reduce stress that can fuel angry outbursts. Um, as often when we are probably stuck at home, a lot of these things do come up on a regular basis. And lastly, recognize and avoid your triggers. Um, give some thought to the things that make you mad. Um, when you're not mad, think about those things that, that are making you mad. So then you're able to visualize them. If you know that you always get mad, for example, um, or you get angry driving downtown, for example, at a rush hour, try some alternate route, for example. Uh, take the bus or try to adjust your schedule to make the trip less, um, you know, at a time which is less busy, for example. If you always argue with your spouse, you know, for example, um, during the daytime or at nighttime, avoid bringing up contentious topics when you're both tired, um, because that's not the time when you want to have those sort of top type of discussions. If you're constantly annoyed that your child hasn't, for example, cleaned your room or shut the door, so you, know, you don't have to look at the mess in order to go ahead and try and pile up all of these things, which then become, they boil up and then they burst out. You can, you can of course, completely el eliminate these angry feelings. Some of the, these angry feelings actually are good um, because there has to be some sort of balance. But majority of the time, they work against your own uh, physical and spiritual well-being. So, but you can, you know, make changes to the way those events affect you and the ways in which you respond by making the effort to keep your anger in check, you and the people close to you will be happier in the longer run. And then of course, with the help of um, our prayers, our salat, our invocations, our duas, uh, namaz is the best of the remedies of it, but how can you stand up before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, speaking and using the words of dua and the kalamat of Quran and the kalamat of Masumin and making dua in the words of Masumin and then use the same tongue to go ahead and uh, use it for foul language and ill um, measured or mannered words toward your family members or for example your colleagues or people in your surroundings. So all of these are some of the techniques that we can definitely all work on. Uh, especially in these days that we are going through this difficult time. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a tawfiq to control um, our anger in order to uh, make sure that we live healthy and uh, inshallah uh, spiritually and um, health-wise we're safe and sound. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a tawfiq and ability to um, adopt the teachings of Masumin alayhim salatu wasalam and uh, hasten the reappearance of our awaited Imam and make us amongst the helpers and the soldiers of Imam. Akhru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Mutawajjah ziyarat. Assalamu alaykum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaykum ya Nabi Allah. Assalamu alaykum ya Habib Allah. Assalamu alaykum ya Khiyarat Allah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum ya wa abdillah. Assalamu alaykum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaykum wa ala jaddika wa abik wa ala ummika wa akhik wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum ya gharib al gharaba. Assalamu alaykum ya mu'ina dua faib al fuqara. Assalamu alaykum ya shams al shumus wa anis al nufus. Ayuh al madfun bi ardu tu salib ibn Musa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum ya sahib al asr wa zaman. Assalamu alaykum ya maam al insa wal jana. Assalamu alaykum ya sharik al quran. Ajal Allah ta'ala farajak wa sahal Allah makhrajak wa zuhurak. Waja'alana mina wanik wa ansarik rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shall I join us on Thursday night for our Shabbat program? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.